speak. There's something going on. It's just not, you know, me engaging in angry thrusting and you're just like lying back and like taking what I have to say. I mean, that's, is that partnership? I mean, is that really making love out of nothing at all? All right, when it's just me just filled with anger and thrusting, you know, my ideas and my values like right in your face and just like raping your mind. No, that's not love. That's not, I need to practice my machine gun imitations. Yeah, sorry, sorry. But uh, that's not love. That's not love. So I remember I went to interview Kitten Natividad, I think in early 1997. And I was just a naive 27-year-old working on my first book. I mean, innocent lad, three years into my stay in Los Angeles. And and Kit Natividad was a, an experienced, wise woman. And she had accumulated you know, so much knowledge, so much wisdom, uh, so much love, and, and so much philosophy from her 52 years of life. So I went to interview Kitten. We had a nice dinner. I helped her install AOL on her computer. And when I went to say goodbye, she like gave me a big hug, which was a l little bit uh, surprising. And I know you're thinking, oh, 40, I'm going to mock you for, for, for courting a 52-year-old woman when you were 27. Like, I am going to mock you for showing tenderness to a 52-year-old woman. I am going to laugh at you being vulnerable with a 52-year-old woman. I am going to, you know, despise you for the consideration and the care that you took with this 52-year-old woman. Because it's a good thing to love. It's a good thing to bring people pleasure. It's a great thing to get on the same page with people. The more you have in common with someone, right, the better, right? If you agree on the same music, right, that will bring you closer. If you agree on the same movies, right? that will bring you closer. If you agree on the same favorite football team, that will bring you closer. If you agree on the same politics, that will bring you closer. If you're a member of the same religion, they have the same theology, the same religious practice, the more you have in common, all right, the closer you're going to be. On the other hand, all right, when the, when the pundit, when the live streamer, when the podcaster gets out of touch with his audience, so let's say his audience are mainly dissident types and they are convinced that the 2020 election was stolen but the host does not go along with them, then that relationship has lost its balance and it is in danger. So you start thinking differently than other people, all right? You start speaking differently than other people. You start practicing differently than other people. You are going to create dislocation and distance from those people. So you want to be a successful live streamer, a successful podcaster, successful pundit. You need to be on the same page with your audience. And the more dissonance comes between you and the audience, the more things that you disagree on, the weaker that relationship is going to be until people just turn on you. Now, being in harmony with people, like moving together with, with people, that's a great thing. But there are more important values. So I was willing, even though it was completely unexpected, you know, I was willing to be the old-fashioned 19th century Victorian gentleman with Kitten Natividad. But, but there were still values that were higher for me than being a courtly 19th century Victorian gentleman when it came to Kitten Natividad. So when she asked me to do something that was just not in consonance with my values, I said no. I refused. Right? I was willing to be the courtly 19th century Victorian gentleman, right? I didn't flee from her embrace, but she's screaming out, you know, stick your fingers up my butt, but I wouldn't do it because that goes against my values. Like I don't insert my fingers in the, the anal cavity, all right? It's like, my God, I, I stand for something. Like I'm not like Mr. Holiness and uh, you know, I may not be a walking, talking vessel for God. I may not be the greatest embodiment of ethical monotheism. I may not be the poster child for conversion to Orthodox Judaism, but I am not going to slip a couple of digits into that aperture, all right? I'm not going to do it. I stand for things, man. I, I'm not going to sell out my integrity, even if she's screaming for me to do that. And she was 
really disappointed. And, but I said no, all right? Y you might be screaming for me to take the side of voter fraud or to denounce the globalist elites for imposing COVID lockdowns. Or, you know, you may want me to, you know, go against uh, COVID vaccines. But when, when COVID hit, I read a book on the 1918-1919 uh, Spanish flu. And I said, oh, wow, there, there are instances when you've got a severe influenza epidemic where you want to give public health authorities more room and you do want to take you know, fairly stringent public health measures. I don't know, you know exactly where you should go, just like... I understand that pornography and civilization are at odds. All right, you have to put limits. Otherwise, they used to have like animal sex shows on, on Melrose Boulevard. All right, without limits, uh, you, you had pornography shops up until 1977 that routinely sold child porn. So when pornographers talk about, oh, we, we never track in child porn, that's only because you can't get away with it anymore. Right, when they could get away with it, they did get away with it. So, yeah, I'm no, I'm no bloody poofter. I mean, just a vow. No, no, no monkey pox for, for me. All right? So th there are things that I, I still stand for. And with Fox News, man, if only they had imbibed the spiritual lessons from when I said no to Kit Natividad screaming for me to insert digits up a particular aperture. Like, Fox News was afraid of losing their audience. Their audience was saying, stick couple of digits up my aperture and like roll it around stimulate my prostate and tell me you know how wicked and evil dominion is and how those satanic pedophile democrats stole the 2020 elections and the fox hosts tucker carlson sean hannity uh, the fox news hierarchy right do you think they they genuinely wanted to insert their digits up that orifice and roll it around and stimulate the prostate with these crazy stories about Dominion and voter fraud. No, they didn't want to do it, but they were even more afraid of losing their audience. So I could have compromised my integrity. Like I could have sold my soul to to bring Kit Natividad the kind of pleasure that she demanded, but I wasn't going to sell out, right? So it's a beautiful thing to be in harmony with people. Like the more you have in common with people, the better. So generally speaking, you should say the same things, do the same things as the people you most want to get along with. Now, you can just give them different meanings, all right? So if everyone in your office, you know, insists on, you know, woke stuff, you can just m mouth the same woke platitudes, but you just interpret them on a spiritual basis. Or if everyone around you insists on 2020 voter fraud, then you should say the same platitudes, but you can just understand the, the 2020 voter fraud as a spiritual voter fraud, right? So you say the same things, you do the same things as, as everyone else, right? But you don't have to sell out man and that way you don't get absolutely humiliated having to you know pay off 787 million dollars to dominion all right a lot of great stuff in the chat so let's get to the chat love will prevail yes yes yeah, so the democrats are the real racists man stormy daniels must be stopped no no rune stormy daniels is the only thing standing between us and another Holocaust. Yeah, that rioting in Chicago, it's just different people expressing their different gifts. It would be terrible if these rioting youths starved to death. Anything that we need to do to stop that from happening. Yeah, think of the initiative that these youths are exhibiting. I mean, think about this face of good governors. Elliot says, Tucker Carlson's correct. Get out of the city. Move to Whitefish, Montana. Luke Croft says, conservatives are obsessed with racial snuff films. Yep, Democrats, the real racists. Uh, Tucker just bringing the old love and inclusion or hate and division. Love will prevail. Look, I don't care what your skin color is. God made us all equal. Elliot's thinking of opening a 7-Eleven in Compton, not for the money, but for the community. Beautiful. Smash racism. We need first step 2.0, right? Thank God for Donald Trump and first step getting so many criminals out of prison, oppressed criminals of color in particular. Yeah, what Tucker was saying is absolute nonsense. I feel safe in L.A. And if, if you've got to play, they got to play. 
We just need more midnight basketball. Will I vote for Trump so I can do another First Step Act? Absolutely. We need more community outreach programs. Maybe Dennis Prager can host some dinners with a difference. Dennis Prager had this program, Dinners with a Difference, where he invited black people and white people inviting each other to their homes for, for dinner to overcome racial division, racial divide. But but uh, the, the money people behind Dennis Prager advised him that that would be legally risky. I don't know. I don't think it'd be legally risky. What could possibly go wrong sending a bunch of white people into Compton to have dinner with a nice black family? And what could possibly go wrong having some Compton use come to Beverly Hills, Westwood, Santa Monica, Century City for a nice dinner with some uptight white folks. What could possibly go wrong? I don't see anything that could, could go wrong. I wish Dennis Prager had the courage to enact dinners with a difference. Think about what a much better country this would be if, if black people and white people were able to sit down and have dinner together. Yeah, if only these rioters learn to immerse themselves in uh, Hayek and Saul and Martin Luther King. Tucker's just so irresponsible with this crap. I mean, the U.S. is just fine, bros. Yeah, they're just breakdancing. It's their culture. It just feels honest. It feels homely. You're a bunch of racist white people have no culture. 40, you need to practice your machine gun imitation. <laughs> Yeah, that's what that's what Hitler told the Einsatzgruppen. You need to need to practice your machine gun work. They just need to practice. Bro, you're just reenacting the graduate. How many viewers did Forty lose after he read those books on election fraud? I completely alienated my core audience. Yeah. My average views went down from like twenty live viewers per stream to like fourteen. And it hurts. Like, I, I often, I stand here, and I'm just delivering gold, just just pure gold. And sometimes there's just a flood of viewers to check out my stream. Maybe I've got this sexy title that, that compels viewers. And then I stand here, I pour my heart out, all right? And then I watch the viewer count drop from 25 to 20 to 15 to 10. I think I was like 90 minutes into last night's show, and I was down to like five live viewers. It's like... The normal live streamer, the longer he streams, the more viewers he gets. I'm the very opposite. The longer I stream, the fewer viewers I get. They just keep dropping off. Maybe it's because they're so old. That maybe they're, they're like dropping dead. Sad. I mean, you may see trees of green, skies of blue, and think, what a beautiful world. But I'm more spiritual than you are. I see dead people. I see civil war. I see crematoria going up in Beverly Hills. I see another whole lot of more in Century City. I asked Luke to set up an interview with the singer of Air Supply. But he's, that guy's got a lot of uh, tats. Yeah, I even said no when the professor and the landlord and just a whole bunch of rando blokes wanted to blow me. Right? Like, free rent meant nothing to me. Uh, a man of my high moral character. The cola cola plants were all killed and drained of liquids in front of a rabbi, Luke. Apertures are for photography. Yeah, so I dated a woman after she left the industry, uh, Haley Rivers. And what, what ultimately drove her from the industry is that she went for a photography shoot. And she, she was posing naked in, in a very vulnerable position. You'll be absolutely shocked when you find out what happened. You won't believe what happened next. The photographer... He dropped his trousers. He inserted himself inside of her uh, without a condom, pumped her a few times, and ejaculated inside of her. Like, that's no way to treat a lady, right? She went along for, for a classy photography suit, and that's the kind of treatment she gets. That's why the pornography industry has consistently lost its best and brightest because of this kind of Me Too abusive, you know, white male objective objectification of women it's got to be stopped yeah 
Bro, I haven't been kicked out of 109 apertures. You're getting the spiritual lesson of what I'm trying to impart to you totally wrong. I have refused 109 apertures. Like, people used to mock me. Like, I'd be there on the red carpet of some pornography movie premiere, like, conducting interviews with porn starlets, and these various porn starlets would come up and hit on me and, like, invite me over to their pool and, you know, have a, have a party with them, and I would just ignore them because I just kept my focus on my work. Like, I could have sold out, but I believe in things. I stand for things. It was a lot of responsibility. For years, I was the moral leader in the pornography industry, and I could have taken advantage of that status, right? But did I, did I sell out? Did I, did I dissipate my essence all over the San Fernando Valley? I said no. Like, I'm, I'm a serious journalist, guys. Luke, hit that last note of chances. I love that song, Chances. But the chances are all gone. Oh, my God, that makes me think of that. This sweet, beautiful, lovely girl that uh, I went to Sierra Community College with. Just a lovely blonde girl. Just wholesome, beautiful. I assume she was a virgin. And I once... Uh, before political science class, I once uh, snuck up behind her and, and I surprised her. And when I, when she turned around, she had tears in her eyes, right? That's, that's how painful. And that's how vulnerable she was willing to be with me. She was willing to, to cry and show me her tears. And she wanted me to go to UC Davis and study economics with her. But no, I wanted to go to Southern California because I heard the girls were really slutty. But the chances are all gone. I could have been with a nice girl. I could have had a normal life. Like we could have grown together. I could have been with a strong, independent woman who wouldn't be afraid to call me on my nonsense, who wouldn't you know, put up with my BS, someone who would have been my equal, someone who would have challenged me, and we would have grown together. Right? We could have been like 30 years into our marriage by now. We'd, we'd have four kids and two grandkids by now. But no. I wanted to go to UCLA because I thought the women were slutty there. And I could have gone to UC Davis, got a very respectable degree in economics, settled down with a very nice blonde girl. And now the chances are all gone. Man, the, the viewership just dropping like flies. A coffee enema is still a thing in LA. I haven't heard much about them. Have I been to the Channel Islands of California? Nope. Yeah, I feel like I'm all out of love. What am I without you? I know you were right, believing for so long. If I launch into song, right, then I'll, I'll get copyright problems, right? If I actually hit the tune, right, then I'll get copyright issues. What did I want to do with my economics degree? I wanted to get a master's in economics and then a PhD in economics from Oxford. Luke Ford talks about what air supply means to him. <laughs> 140,000 views. Throw me down that, that link, bro. Throw me down that link. Uh, put, put another, put another uh, link on the bar before me, mate. Oh my God, I've got, I've got gold for you today. There's gold in them there hills. 41's played Rocky like a hurricane on the didgeridoo. So I wish I could come up with the the great, you know, one-liners that Dennis Prager does. I mean, that guy is just a machine for ideas. I mean, I wish I could do it. I, I wish I could bring it like, like he does. And he has this great line, the bigger the government, the smaller the citizen. Meaning that the more the government does for people, the more it diminishes them, the more it infantilizes them. Right, the more it limits their opportunities for growth. You know what? How, how lucrative that approach is. The bigger the government, the smaller the citizen. You know how conservatives love that. Small government conservatives just resonate with that. There are so many speaking opportunities, writing opportunities, radio opportunities, TV opportunities, status in the conservative world with with that kind of thinking. There's just a problem. It doesn't have much validity, right? The, the, the smaller the government, the bigger the citizen. 
okay, we have an enormous defense budget, right? That's what makes the United States so strong and, and the dollar so strong. So is having an enormous military, an enormous defense budget, do you feel like that's really diminished you? Because I don't feel like that's diminished me. If I were to go to a public toilet on Venice Beach and instead of like the really cheap toilet paper, they had some, you know, toilet paper with real thickness and even like a pleasant odor, right? That would cost more money. That would be bigger government. But I don't feel like that would diminish me if I were to wipe, you know, with, with you know, a more comfortable, a, a thicker, more fragrant and just a, a more classy toilet paper. Like if we had more police, right, that's bigger government so that the streets were safe and you could walk anywhere, anytime in Los Angeles, right? That's big government. I don't feel like I would be diminished if I didn't have to worry about crime. Let's say we had more luxurious public facilities and we had cops there to make sure they weren't ruined. Let's say that uh, we, we made sure that you could ride the subway with perfect safety. You could ride mass transit with perfect safety, right? You would have twice as many people riding public transport in LA. You'd have a lot less uh, traffic on the road. You'd have less smog. But, oh, that's big government. Can't have that. That diminishes the citizen. I don't know if government takes measures, spends money to reduce smog, to reduce crime, to jail people who engage in antisocial behavior. That's big government, right? I would like to double the size of our prison population. That is big government. I am all for it. I don't feel like I am diminished. I don't feel like you're diminished if we have bigger government that uh, imprisons, say, twice as many people for twice as long as we currently do. If we have clean public restrooms. Just imagine you could walk. Like, I want to... Here's my dream. I have a dream that one day I go for a walkabout. Just me and my, um, not my didgeridoo, but my yo yodel, whatever the thing that holds your phone, and I just walk all of Sunset Boulevard. You know, just have a nice walkabout, a nice, you know, six, eight, ten hour live stream, and just imagine that I could do that from sea to shining sea, from uh, Pacific Coast uh, Palisades, you know, walk to uh, Glendale, wherever Sunset Boulevard ends, and and just imagine that we had such big government that there were nice, clean, safe public restrooms along that route. I don't feel like I would be diminished, right, if I could safely walk Sunset Boulevard. I don't feel like I would be diminished. I don't feel like I would be smaller. I don't feel like I'd be an inferior human being if I could walk all over Los Angeles at any time and not have to worry about, you know, my bowels, and, you know, finding, you know, a place to evacuate because I don't know about you, but when I start walking and talking and, and I just get swept away with the, the power of my insights, the, the profundity of my, my vision, the, the transcendent nature of my moral perspective, right? Sometimes you need, you, know, you need, just imagine I could just drop in, you know, at, at a public restroom when I'm walking the entire length of, of Sunset Boulevard and I could just safely leave my gimbal with my phone on it, just, you know, live streaming while I just pop in to, to the public restroom and come back and it's still live streaming. No one's stolen it because we've got big government that keeps public restrooms nice and safe and clean. I don't feel like I would be diminished. All right. I, I, I think that would enhance my life. Plan ahead, dude. All right. So, yeah, I could plan ahead. And I could, I could make my own arrangements with homeowners along the route, right? And I could uh, spend money and time and effort to, you know, arrange things along the route. But it would be much more convenient to have big government do that. Just imagine we could have, you know, air conditioning in public schools. We could have nice, safe, clean, elite uh, public schools all over the United States. All right, that's big government, Right. I, I don't feel like uh, having air conditioning in, in public schools w diminishes people. I don't know about you, but I retain more when, when, say, the temperature in this room is, say, less than 80 degrees or less than 70 degrees, as opposed to when it's 85, 90, 100, 110 degrees. Right? I like to have air conditioning when it gets hot. Right? It 
dramatically improves the quality of my life and I would retain more if I was a student if there was air conditioning. So for the money that we spent invading Afghanistan and Iraq, we could have nice, you know, socialized medicine where everyone could get free medicine. So imagine that we had socialized medicine instead of invading Iraq and Afghanistan, right? Would that really diminish us if you didn't have to worry about losing your job and then you'd lose your health insurance? You didn't have to worry about living on the edge of bankruptcy or entering bankruptcy or being homeless uh, because of some health emergency. So imagine we just had the same level of uh, socialized medicine as a high-functioning country like Australia. So when I go back to Australia and they have cradle-to-grave social welfare programs, when they have excellent public health, right? when they have you know, an excellent uh, public education program into university, all right, I don't feel like the citizens of Australia are diminished or made smaller by having a government that is high-functioning, that is on their side, that is trying to make their, their life better. So, yeah, it is an incredibly appealing sentiment. You know, the bigger the government, the smaller the citizen. But uh, is it really true? That's what I say to you, my friends. Is it, is it really true? I, I know it's appealing, but, but what about truth? Don't you want someone to tell you the truth? What about love? Don't you want someone to care about you? What about profundity? Where's my, where's my didgeridoo? I, I mean, I kind of understand where, where Prague is coming from. You know, I've got some, I've got some sympathy. I mean, when you make love, do you look in your mirror? Mm. When do you think of, does he look like me? Do you tell lies for status, profit, national syndication? And then say that it's forever? Do you think twice? Or just touch and see? Oh, babe. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you're alone, do you let go? Are you wild and willing? Or is it just for show? Oh, come on. I don't want to touch you too much, baby. Because making love to you might drive me crazy. So now you think that small government is the way you make it. So I don't want to be there when you decide to break it. No. Government bites. Government bleeds. It's bringing me to my knees. Government lives. Government dies. It's no surprise. Government begs. Government pleads. And you think, oh, it's what I need. When I'm with you, are you somewhere else? Am I getting through? Or do you please yourself? When you wake up, will you walk out? Can't be love if you throw it about, oh babe. <laughs> Ooh, I don't want to touch you too much, baby. Because big government is driving me crazy. <laughs> government bites. Government bleeds. It's bringing me to my knees. Government lives. Government dies. It's no surprise. 
Government begs. Government pleads. And you think, oh, that's what I need. But, but is it really? Is it really? I mean, the bigger the government, the smaller the citizen. I heard that on Dennis Prager. Okay, so want to succeed as a live streamer, you have to, you have to, you have to give the audience what they want. You have to, you know, balance things. Say the, say the words. All right. When she says, "I love you," you say, "I love you too." I love you more. So you may think, oh, national parks, local parks, you know, pleasant walkways past the ocean, clean rivers, clean air. You might think that those are good things. But government bites, bro. Government bleeds. Government brings you to your knees. The bigger the government, the smaller the citizen. The cleaner the air, the smaller the citizen. The cleaner the water, the smaller the citizen. The finer the public restroom facilities, the higher quality the toilet paper in public restrooms, the smaller the citizen. The more public restrooms available to you, the smaller the citizen. The less crime, the smaller the citizen. The more the super predators are locked up, the smaller the citizen. The more pleasant public walkways the smaller the citizen right the more national parks the smaller the citizen the stronger the national defense the smaller the citizen you want to be a big citizen have no have very limited national defense just just do gofundmes for national defense then i will show you a real national citizen. I mean, that's when men were men, right? When we didn't have government providing for the national defense, right? When we didn't have government providing roads, but you had to just, you know, cut down your own pathway through life, your own pathway through the forest, right? That's when men were men. That's what we need. Okay. Welcome caller. Blessings. Bro, bro you all right? Uh, I've been, uh, I've been adjusting my uh, pharmacology. What do you think? Yeah. I think you're a little unbalanced. Oh no! Do you need, do you need someone to talk to, dude? I, I see dead people. <laughs> yeah. Do you try shrooms? I didn't need shrooms, bro. I've been listening to Dennis Prager. We've got. Could it happen here? It is happening here, bro. We, we've got a civil war that's raging around us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But you have to admit, uh, you know, it may not be civil war, but Things do seem kind of shaky, don't they? Well, in some ways, but bro, we're just living in a liminal space, right? It's just between now and what comes next. It could be a disaster. Like tomorrow could bite. Tomorrow could bleed. Tomorrow could bring us to our knees. Or it could be the greatest thing ever. We could reduce racism inequality uh we could have like uh green energy but we can't because we gotta we gotta support those ukrainians bro they need us they need our help we could have peace in our time bro peace in our time that's what i stand for yeah okay okay i didn't have much to say i was literally i was legitimately concerned for it. oh i can handle it bro like other people yeah. They can't handle this kind of, you know, caffeine and and modafinil mm. and the cranberry extract and Did you, the uh, it, the Canada Dry, no sugar ginger ale. Other people can't handle that kind of thing, but bro, I can listen to Def Leppard and I can handle it all. Did you have any nicotine gum today? I have Seems not like had any nicotine gum today. Would you Would you recommend? Is this no, is this the time I, for I, nicotine I, I, gum? No, it's absolutely the wrong time for nicotine gum. You need the, you got to go the other direction. Okay. You need a, you need a dark and stormy. Bro, she is the only thing standing between us and fascism. Yeah. No, you, you know what a dark and stormy is? It's a no, drink. No, I don't. Oh. It's a, it's a rum, but it has, you don't drink alcohol. It's rum and uh, ginger beer. It's, 
it's a it's very nice. Luke Croft says that video last night got me worried, Elliot Blatt. What's he talking about? I don't know. Ask him to refresh my memory. Was I, me, I would store me your cattle cars, bro. Store me your cattle cars. Make your choice, Western man. <laughs> No, it's not stormy. It's it's going to be the utter... I'm really getting the urge to... I'm really starting to consider leaving the city. <laughs> Given what I've seen, it's, am, I being, am I overreacting? Am I being... Yeah, dramatic? bro, you're in a liminal space. Don't don't introduce oh. people's sisters to drugs. I don't yeah. have adulterous affairs with uh, the sisters of men with extensive criminal convictions. Right? Try not to do that. And mm-hmm. and you'll be fine. I know, but there's a certain randomness to this violence. It, it, it seems like, um, I don't know, it's, it's genuine chaos. I don't know who could open a business. Bro, that's just Tucker Carlson providing you with hate porn. Everything's fine. Yeah. So no, no problems in Pico Robertson? Yeah, we have problems, but problems are just opportunities to grow in love. <laughs> we're in a liminal space here we have no we have no idea yeah. i mean you got to read the new york times there's, there's a great article on this this new york times essay is called we don't know what will happen next <laughs> it's That's so profound. profound have you ever thought oh, about man. that i'm still quaking i'm shaking from the profundity of that uh, i mean the new york times it bites it bleeds it brings you to your knees but the new york times lives and it loves and it begs and it pleads and it's what i need mm. so did you read your copy today your did I re- copy? yes 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 of course. um elliot everybody hurts everybody cries but don't let yourself go everybody hurts sometimes like you missing rem hey you should listen to don't go back to rock Cole if you're feeling nostalgic when your day is long and the night, the night is yours alone. When you're sure you've had enough of this life, well, hang on. Don't let yourself go because everybody cries. That's true. That's true. Uh, uh, I, I'm really, I'm really, I've had a tough couple of days, Luke. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not functioning at my highest. Uh, tell, tell me, tell me I'm where working. it hurts, bro. I'm here for you. Uh, just the grind luke i'm being ground down ground down luke every day is the same i'm like a i'm like a mule i have to pull the same load through the fields and every Brad, day it sounds like you need power i do i do you i need, need a power network. to pull your load you wow. need an internal reorganization so that you can optimize and become more effective and efficient and more powerful so you can jump up to that tree branch and just pull yourself up, do a couple of pull-ups. I need to blow this load, Luke. I need this load out of me. I need to blow this load. You need to blow this load, bro. Yeah. Are the termites killing you, bro? Are the satanic pedophiles getting you down? No, I've got my optimal male magnaforce from Alex Jones, so I'm cool. So seriously, what do you do for power? So... I feel more powerful usually after I meditate, after I do pull-ups, after I get exercise, after I listen to an inspiring like 12-step talk or go on a 12-step meeting or just a favorite uh, podcast or like inspirational books uh, w- or connecting with, with friends. Where do you get your power, Elliot Blatt? Uh, I, I get it by lying supine on the uh, sun tanning deck at the beach i just absorb those beneficent solar rays i'm a sun worshiper luke Hmm. Hmm. simple i I go old school Hmm. you know i I know just how to fake it and i know just how to scheme and i know just when to face the truth and then i know just when to dream and i know the night is fading and i know the time's going to fly and i'm never going to tell you everything i got to tell you but i know i got to give it a try I know the roads to riches, and I know the ways to fame. I know all the rules, and I know how to break them, and I always know the name of the game. But I don't know how to leave you, and I'll never let you fall. 
And I don't know how you do it, bro. Making love out of nothing at all. It's powerful, dude. It is powerful, powerful. isn't it? Don't you feel empowered? I mean, don't you now have the strength and the energy to get out there and make some money? (laughs) I feel like Caesar, bro. Crossing the Rubicon. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Dubit's having a show uh, on Sunday. I'm gonna call in. We're gonna discuss our entrepreneurial activities. We're gonna have a little practical networking session. You know, people Jew to who, Jew, you know, people who Jews who need Jews are the luckiest people in the world. <laughs> That's right. <sighs> Tribe of Abraham, man. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. We need each <laughs> other, man. We, we. we we, we need to lift each other up. I mean, people, people can say, oh, you know, it's just too much, too much of a burden. But we've got to pack up the babies. We've got to grab the old ladies. Everyone goes because this is Brother Forty's traveling salvation show. Have you, have you kept up with Ethan Ralph? No. How is Brother Ethan? <laughs> he is not doing well, dude. Oh, he is so spend- sad. Sorry. He's descending into this just gremlin state, this this sort of semi-human state. He just kind of mumbles and slurs. But the drug use seems to have just gone off the charts. I, I really don't think he's going to live long. He, you he, know, he's real. Do you know why God gave us two good hands? So that we can reach out with one hand to our brother, Ethan. When he is troubled, like just reach out one hand for him, because that's what it's there for. Like when What's Ethan the... is troubled, you got to reach out your hand, reach it out to the man up there, Ethan, because that's what he's there for. So take my hand in yours, walk with me this day. In my heart, I know I will never stray. What do we do with the other hand? Uh, we put it on our heart. Oh. Okay. And we listen okay. to our heart. We got to pack okay. up the babies, grab the old ladies, and everyone goes. I'm a stickler for details, so. Well, yeah, I don't think he'd be receptive to what I have to say. Uh, but you, I mean, you ha- you've appeared on his show. You know, you you've got a rapport with him. I think I think he's he needs an intervention, Luke, and you're the man to bring it. Well, it's important to start soft and slow, like a small earthquake, and then then when I let go, half the San Fernando Valley shakes. Well played, dude. Well played. Bless all us. right, man. That's all I got. That's all I got. I got to go to bed. That's all you've got? It was so much. I mean, poor, poor Elliot, he just, like, he sells himself short. Like, after those pearls of wisdom, he says, that's all I've got? I mean, yeah. he gives us so much, I guys. go out on top. I go out on top. I don't, I don't, I don't wait for the hook, you know. I go out on top. Elliot gives and gives and gives, and then he says, oh, that's all I've got. It's like he, he's climbed the 20,000-foot mountain. He's taken us to the highest peaks, right? He look, has helped us look, forward every valley, cross every look, stream. Look, to, to quote Mick Jagger, I don't got that much jam. Bro, 